Hey everyone, so today I want to give you a little bit of background information on Anne Bronte beyond what we've already discussed in class and use that as a foundation for our discussion of Agnes Grey throughout this week. Anne Bronte was the youngest of the Bronte sisters, as we know. This meant that her experiences were somewhat different than those of Charlotte and Emily. Whereas Charlotte and Emily were both sent to school very shortly after the death of their mother, um, and that meant that they experienced the illness-causing conditions of clergy daughter school, that school that would eventually inspire Lowood in Jane Eyre, where um, Mariah and Elizabeth contracted the illness that would cause their death. So, well, that was the experience of Charlotte and Emily Bronte in their young youth um, childhood. Um, Anne spent much more time being raised and educated at home, um, though she did travel to Roe Head with Charlotte when Charlotte became a teacher there. Um, biographers describe um, Anne Bronte's youth as a bit more protected than that of her older sisters, and she's also described um, in correspondences and biographies as the most attractive of the sisters. Um, much like Agnes Gray, it wasn't until she was 19 years old that Anne was able to strike out on her own. She became a governess, um, and then at the second position was joined by her brother Branwell. Um, but after two years, she left shortly before Branwell was dismissed for bad behavior officially. As we saw dramatized in the biopic we watched in class, um, Branwell developed a drug and alcohol problem, which many see as potentially part of the inspiration behind Anne Bronte's more popular novel, The Tenant of Wildfell Hall. So history has not always been kind to Anne Bronte, and criticism throughout history has not always been kind to Anne Bronte. Um, I was reading a 1995 New Yorker review of a Bronte biography, and in it, Peter Aykroyd says, um, Agnes Gray is frankly gray. And the truth is that Anne Bronte would probably not be remembered for her own sake. Although her second book, The Tenant of Wildfell Hall, does possess moments of genuine horror. Nevertheless, she has been lifted into immortality in the arms of her sisters. Which is just what every youngest um, sibling wants, right? Is to be told that they are just riding on the coattails of their big sisters. Um... However, although that is the opinion of some, um, others believe that Charlotte had a hand in her sister's literary legacy or lack thereof. Um, after Emily and Anne's death, Charlotte was asked to preface new editions of Wuthering Heights and of Anne's two novels. Um, Charlotte agreed to do so for Wuthering Heights and Agnes Grey, but she commented that Wildfell Hall it, uh, hardly appears desirable to preserve. This choice of subject in that work is a mistake. Um, not very complimentary. Um, some read this as sibling rivalry. Others point to the fact that the other Bronte sisters always seem to view Anne as more gentle and demure than Wildfell Hall would suggest of its author. And so um, there might be a sense that in doing so, Anne was trying to preserve her version of who she thought her sister was in her mind. Um, it's interesting to read the three Bronte sisters in comparison to one another. Um, and it's definitely sometimes impossible to resist doing so, especially when you think of the common influences and energy that run through all of the different novels. Um, I do think, though, that's also important that we give Anne Bronte some space to do her own thing and work within her own tradition. Um, Agnes Grey and Wildfell Hall, for sure, are two very different novels, but I think especially Agnes Grey can be disappointing if we read it with the expectation that it will be like Jane Eyre or Wuthering Heights. Um, if we separate it from Charlotte and Emily Bronte, though, we might get the opportunity to know Anne on Anne's terms and discover her own unique perspective and voice. And I think that's really the benefit of including Agnes Gray in um, a course like the one that we're in the middle of. So in terms of the plan for this week, today I'd like you to comment in response to the question posted after this lecture on ICON. 
Um, please also remember to respond to the question of the day um, or the question of the week, sorry, in that discussion forum and to do that by the end of today. By Wednesday, you'll go back to that question of the week and respond to two of your classmates. And I'd also like you to read the article that I've shared in a discussion forum that is about Anne Bronte's legacy throughout the 20th century um, and her appearance in popular culture in recent years and to read that and then to respond to that as well. So then on Friday, we'll have our first Zoom class that's scheduled during our regular schedule time, um, 9.30 in Central Time. If you're not able to come to that conference, um, please do contact me for an alternate assignment, um, preferably before the conference begins, but definitely no later than the end of this week. Um, so Sunday night is kind of the cutoff for getting that alternate assignment, though, of course, I am willing to make exceptions for emergencies. Um, contact me if you've got any questions. I miss you. I really hope that you're all doing well and staying safe and healthy. And I'm very much looking forward to seeing you on Friday. Bye.